Hello Internet, I'm Kevin and uh, since we've been out talking to people we've had a lot of interest in people asking us how we actually go about uh, the process of designing a board and then carrying it all the way through manufacture. Uh, we actually build and manufacture all of our own stuff right here in our own shop uh, so we wanted to share the process with you guys so here we go. So when we first come up with an idea, the first thing we have to do obviously is choose what parts we're gonna use. And this is just an example, but this is an Arduino Uno processor. And the first thing we do is we bring it into software and we define the part. Uh, basically, this is just a, just a box, but we put uh, the pins around it, and then we go and we name each pin. Uh, so we just look at the data sheet and we say, you know, this is pin number 15, this is what it's called out as, and we go all the way around and now the part's defined. And we can add some other uh, information about it, like um, how much it costs, what its part number is, where we can order it from, um, that sort of thing. And so now the, the part's defined, and we have to do that for every single part that we use. Um, now once we have the box defined, then we go over and define a footprint for it. And this is the footprint for that processor. And all the, the pins that were on the, uh, the, the box are all represented. These are the actual physical pads uh, that are gonna be landed on the circuit board. So once we've defined that, now we're actually ready to get to work on actually using the component for something worthwhile. When we uh, set up the schematic of a design overall, we kind of break it into pieces. If you can't fit it all on one page, it makes it a lot easier to understand if you kind of put it into boxes. And then each box represents another page on the schematic. So the, the processor page is kind of obviously where all the brains come together is this guy. So this is that part that we just defined uh, and put all the pins on it, but this is where we go and actually start connecting wires to it. Uh, so we connect wires to it and then we uh, give it labels and then we can use that uh, together with the top layer here to tie it between um, different different segments in the uh, in the design. So once we know what parts we want on it, we need to actually figure out what the product looks like. And so we go into SolidWorks for that. And with that, we can basically uh, create and define all of the physical parts of the thing. And so this is an example of the Ringo robot. And uh, this is where we get in there and we define what the actual shape of the circuit board is going to look like, all the main physical parts, uh, so we know where to go from there. And that shows us where we're going to have to put all of our holes in the board, uh, where all the vias, or at least the mounting holes, uh, the, the main mounting holes for the through hole stuff, and then the shape of the board and we can go from there now and we've got there's just the circuit board defined and we export that from SolidWorks and we bring it back into our circuit design software and we begin to actually make the circuit board itself out of it. Uh, so there's the, the same file that we brought in, we define the board and now we start actually putting the traces on it. So here we actually start drawing all the actual traces on the circuit board. The uh, yellow is the top, the green is the middle layer and, and uh, blue is the bottom layer. So once we get it in here, the software is pretty good about telling us what traces need to go where. For example, if I highlight this, you can see the trace is already in place but it would tell me, uh, if I hadn't already routed it yet, it would draw a line between this pad and this pad up here, and we would know we needed to connect the two of those. Uh, so it's just kind of a puzzle, putting a puzzle together where you sit down and say, well, you know, which, which traces need to go the most distance, uh, which are the most important traces, and you get those in there first, and then you start kind of filling up the rest of it uh, around it. And we actually do this all manually. We don't use uh, software-defined routers. Uh, it, it, they don't work so well with boards that are really tight like this. Uh, so we find that just uh, doing it by hand, is, it takes a little longer but it's a much cleaner result in the end. So once we have the board complete, we need to set it up to actually send to a board house to actually fabricate the circuit board for us. And so we export what they call Gerber files. And a Gerber file is, um, it's an old file format used on, a, on plotters. So a Gerber file, uh, there's actually several of them that get created and there's one for each layer. And so this is just the top layer. So if you zoom in here, you can see this is all the copper uh, that's going to be present on the top layer of the circuit board. And the board house, when they make the board, this is exactly how they're going to print the top layer. There's the middle or the ground layer. Now you can see it's mostly solid. Uh, and then you have the middle layer where you have the, the traces that are inside the board. That's what that layer is going to end up looking like. There's the bottom layer. Uh, we have the overlay, and this is where all the print that's going to be on it. So you have all your designators and all the shapes of your parts, and anything that's going to be pad per, or uh, silk screened on the top of the circuit board goes on this layer. Uh, this is the top solder mask. Uh, this is all the openings that are going to be in the board. So the entire board is going to be whatever color the board is, and then all the spots where you see color here, they're going to be left open, and that's going to expose all the pads for all the footprints so that you can actually put solder on them. And then finally you've got your solder paste layer and this is what we're going to send to the uh, people to make the solder stencil and they're going to uh, cut little openings in uh, a metal foil that's going to allow us to uh, silk screen solder over the top of it and you can see that it lines up with all the pads uh, for all your parts and so that's how we, how we fabricate that part.
So after we send the Gerber files away to the board house, they actually fabricate the circuit boards for us. And they come back in anywhere between a couple days and a few weeks, depending on how quickly we need them and what we're willing to pay for them. And the boards come back, and, and a lot of times we can put several parts together, like this is the Ringo prototype, where we had all the parts put together in one single board. Uh, but when we go to production, usually what we want to do is something more like this, where we have several boards in a panel, and that just allows them to run to run through the process of uh, pasting them and putting them in the assembly machine and reflowing them all in one shot. So you don't have to do it as many times. And depending on the size of your board, you know you might have six of them here. There's like 14 of them in this product. Uh, so it just kind of depends on your need uh, as far as how many of them you panelize up. So once you get the boards back, then it's time to go on to actually assembling these things. All right, so we got our circuit boards back from the board house. This is how they arrive. We get a whole pack of them all together like this, and we pull the board out. And so this is the bare board, just the way we defined it in our software, and we're ready to actually start putting some parts on it. So the first thing we have to do is get solder paste on it. And the solder paste is what's actually going to solder the parts onto the board. So this machine is our paste machine. And it's basically just a giant uh, screen printer for circuit boards. OK, to start the process off, we're going to take the board. And we lock it down to a work holder. And there's some locating pins on the work holder that go through tooling holes in the board, and that locates the board so that when it goes inside the machine, it's going to come up underneath the solder stencil, and it's going to be located correctly to be printed. So once it's all in place, we've got a foot switch to start it off. The table goes inside the machine, and it's going to rise up underneath the bottom of the solder stencil. And once it's in place, we're going to open up the lid here and do an inspection and make sure that everything's lined up correctly before we let the machine actually do its print back and forth. Okay, so once the board is in the machine, we open the lid and we uh, go do a quick inspection on it. We just make sure that the apertures in the uh, stencil are lined up perfectly with the board. And there's some veneer adjustments on the sides here that we'll get in here and tweak if we need to to get it lined up just perfect. And once it's dead on, then we go ahead and close the lid. And these blades are going to take the solder paste, which is the consistency of toothpaste, and it's going to kind of squeegee it across the board and then bring it back. And it's just like silk screen printing a, a shirt. So there's our board with the paste all up on it. So you can see all the pads that are going to have parts on them um, have the gray solder paste on the pads now. And so it, it's basically wet right now. So if you rubbed your hand over it, you would, you'd make a big mess. Uh, but this is the way it's ready to go into the pick and place machine, which is going to actually populate all these pads with parts. So now we have paste on our board. We're ready to put parts on it. So this is a pick and place machine, and this is how pretty much all components are assembled on circuit boards. The parts actually arrive to us on these tapes. Uh, you can see these tiny, tiny little dots on it, and they actually, every one of those little dots has a part inside of it. Uh, there's a thin uh, cover, cover slip material that gets stripped off by the feeder as it loads up in there. And the feeders, you can see them all the way around, uh, but they actually they present the part at the top of the feeder, and then there's a uh, vacuum nozzle on the placement head. You'll see in a second. Uh, the placement head comes over, it drops the nozzle down on, it turns a vacuum on, and then it picks it up, and it goes over and places it on the board, turns the vacuum off, and then it goes and gets the next part. And it just keeps doing that over and over and over until all the parts are on the board. So the first thing it does is it looks at some reference marks that are on the board to tell it exactly where the board is, is situated. So it's doing that right now, and then it's going back and it's going to start grabbing parts. And so it's off in the races and it's populating now. Okay, so it's all finished now, and that takes anywhere from a few minutes to maybe 30 minutes or so, depending on the complexity of the board, obviously, and the number of parts that have to be placed. Uh, so we let the machine go. Once it's all done, it lets us know, and then we can grab our board out, and then we're off to the very last step, which is to put it in the oven. And so what we do is we actually put the board in the oven, and it uh, gets hot enough that it actually makes the solder go liquid. And so it's just like soldering with your soldering iron, except the, the actual air around the board gets hot enough that it reflows the entire board. So it liquefies the solder on the whole board all at the same time. And then when it, when it cools down, then you've got a finished board. As a side note, for double layer boards, we do a lot of boards that have double layers. So we have uh, parts on both sides. And people always ask, how is that possible? And I always wondered that myself. 
Uh, it turns out that if you have small enough components, uh, just the surface tension alone is enough to hang them on the bottom of the board. So we don't need to glue them or anything like that. So what we'll normally do is whichever side of the board has the smallest parts on it. Uh, if we have heavy parts, we try to keep them all on just one side of the board. And then we run the side of the board with the small parts first and we cook that one and then we flip it over. Uh, so those parts are on the bottom now and then we put the heavy parts on the top and then we cook the top of it and in most cases the board or the parts will, the small parts will stay stuck to the bottom. And then once it comes out of there, you got a finished board. So after the boards come out of the oven, the last thing that we do is a uh, visual inspection. We go around and look at every single solder joint uh, visually and we just make sure there's no flaws. So uh, occasionally you'll get like a solder bridge, it'll like um, uh, a joining between two adjacent pins on the processor. Um, so we'll clear that off, it's pretty quick and easy, uh, but that just makes sure that there's nothing wrong with the board before we start to power it up. Once the visual inspection is complete, then we do an electrical test on the board, and then we uh, program it up and we do a functional test and just make sure everything's working like it's supposed to, and then it's off to any final assembly and final packaging, and then we put it in a box and ship it to you. So that's how a circuit board's made. Uh, it pretty much works the same way in all factories, whether they're big or small. Uh, sometimes the equipment runs a little faster and they can do higher volumes, but it's pretty much the same process all the way through. So if you have more questions about how exactly we do something, then shoot us a comment and we'll be happy to expand on that in the future. Thanks for joining us.